last time we figured out how to run a flow and get some details out from LinkedIn. Uh, like these details, name, a link to the profile, title and a location. Uh, what we want to do in this video, in this ep uh, episode, is to take the link. Um, let's just try to find... I think this is her. Take a link. We open up the contact info and then we uh, sift out the email. How do we do that using Power Automate Desktop? It's kind of simple. I have the flow here. It is 1, 2, 3, 15, 18 steps. Um, and we will do it together. So if you haven't already, I suggest that you open Power Automate Desktop. And then we will create a flow. And I will show you how to do it. So let's call it LinkedIn Mail Contact Details. And start from scratch. So, in the last episode, we ended up with a file like this, right? Like I just showed you. So, we have the name, link, title, and location. And what we need for this flow is to access the link here from the file. So, if you were to do it all at once, you could probably do it a bit differently. But now that we're, we're um, cutting up the episodes, we will do it. Uh, in this way, which means that we will open up this Excel file, read all of it, and then close the Excel file down, and then and then start uh, using the, the the links in the flow. So we will do that by launching Excel. So we will launch Excel, and we will point, open the following document, and we will point it to the one uh, that we made from last time, like so. And then we will read something from the Excel file. So read from Excel worksheet. We will use. And then we will say um, values from a range of cells. And if we just open it again, then it is uh, from column 2. So column 2, row 1. And then we will end it at column 2 also and row 20 that we have here. And this could obviously be um, way longer, but... Um, for this purpose, we've only done it for a couple of pages in LinkedIn, um, grabbed out the details from a couple of pages, but in the next episode, I will take all the things that we have learned here, I will run it through the first 100 pages of all the uh, Power Automate people that I can find in the search that I've made, uh, extract all the details, and then I will send them a mail with some um, information. So if you want to see that, you can already now click the subscribe thing. I know it's kind of corny, but... Um, that will happen in the next video. So, we read from Excel, value from a range of cells, starting from column one, first line, ending at column one, uh, column two, sorry, column two and column two, and then ending it at the last row of details that we have from the extract. That is it for this. We will just save it as Excel data, that's fine. And then from here, we can close the Excel tab Excel instance and we don't have to save the document. So now if we run this, let's just try to do it, we get a bunch of details into our flow that we can use um, in the next steps. And we will do that. So I'm just putting this over here. Uh, so now we want to launch a new Chrome because we need to have a reference to a variable to a browser variable and we will just call uh, open up linkedin.com as maximized on our oh, as maximized on our local computer and we call the browser that's fine then we actually need to uh, open up excel again so let's use that again um, and we will just call it excel instance 2 that's fine uh, that's fine we will just open a blank document just so we have a no a new um, variable for Excel that we can use and then we will write two details into that write to Excel worksheet so we will reference the second instance because that's the one that we just opened and what we want to write is just name with a big N uh, on column one row one 
and we will just copy that and say here is the uh, oh sorry that is not the name that we want it is the uh, profile link and here is the uh, mail address is if there is one so now what we made is that we with the first three we've opened up the excel file that we made from the last script uh, from the last episode then we've launched a chrome uh, so we have it as a variable so we can reference and we can sift through it and use it in a second and then we've created a new excel instance and um written profile link and mail address in column one and two so a and b uh, just as headers uh, so we have something that we can put underneath it and then we have um, some data now we need to have a for each loop because now we need to start sifting through all of the uh, details that we have in the excel data so we now have 20 rows with links so we need to use these um, for something so we will reference the excel data like so and then we open up the for each loop um, we will then go to web page so this is a little bit tricky and I'll explain you why. Um, so we will just use current item. So we will use the browser because we opened up here. We will navigate to the URL of the current item. And then we have to do something uh, after that, but I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So if we take one of the Excel, let's just take the first one. So this, this is a very weird looking uh, URL. Um, and if we paste that in, we need to now get you see how when I paste it in it defaults back into something way shorter and when we are on this guy's profile and we click on the contact info you will see that the URL changes to add uh, slash overlay slash contact info slash basically so now that we have this long uh, URL in our Excel file uh, we can't just add to the end of it uh, over whatever it was slash uh, contact information we can't do that for this uh, we need the we need the short URL that it basically transforms itself into once we pasted it in so first off we need to um, like we've done here we need to go to the current item and the current item will be this long weird looking URL so we will go to that and then we will use um, an action called get details of web page and we will get the uh, web browser's current URL address and we will store it in this web date web page property that's fine um, because when we do that we're basically we're basically walking through this process where we give the URL this long long or we give the browser this long long URL we hit enter and then we load it up, it changes the URL to something way shorter, which we like, and then we will use the uh, get details of web page uh, action to get this basically, because then when we have this, we can add the, uh, um, we can add this slash overlay slash contact information uh, or contact info to the URL, and then it will basically uh, open up this on the screen so we can steal that uh, whatever it is if there is any um, from the screen so we go back over here and we will use the go to web page again and now we want to um, use the web page property and then we add overlay a uh, contact info like so if i'm not mistaken let me just double check overlay contact info yes let's just run this to see if we're all good until now so we go into his profile we add the if you're quick you can see that it adds it in the url before we shift to the next person so that's fine i'll close it down Stop, 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 yes. Um, because it's just running for the next one, next one, next one, next one. So obviously we need to do something um, else, which uh, will be to uh, use the action get details of element on web 
page. And then we will have to open it. We will have to open. And now we probably need to find Natalia again. Because I know for a fact that she has her I know for a fact that she has her contact info. And there is a mail. So if we go back to now we have this open on the screen. So if we go back here and say that we need to add a UI element. <coughs> We will do that and we will have the anchor here. So uh, this little UI element picker will pop up uh, on the on the web page and then we will just have to click control left click on this and um, we'll press save. Now this works if we run it on Natalia's um, uh, on Natalia's uh, profile. But it's basically looking for the anchor Natalia Maria Maria Veronica at gmail.com. So if we if we use the next current item in the in the list, it won't be able to find this no matter what, even if there is another email. Uh, so we have to make it a little bit less specific, uh, a little bit more generic, uh, for us to be able to work with it. Um, and we will do that by going into the section here, UI elements, and we can inspect this. And then we need to change a few things. So this is a bit too um, a bit too specific. So we will untick this. It doesn't have the text doesn't have to equal this because that'll only be the case for her uh, specific instance. But we can say that the href contains something like mail to and then something. That's good. Oh, um, that's a better start at least. But then we can also see that there's something called ID here, Ember441, which is probably also super specific to Natalia's uh, situation. So we want to also uh, untick that. So now we just have a div section, div section, div A, and then HF, href, uh, contains something like mail to whatever it might be. So hopefully... This will be generic enough, but also specific enough to not fuck anything up, but generic enough for us to extract all the um, emails of, of all the profiles that we will sift through. So now we're going to the page. We're adding this overlay contact info so we get the details up on the page. We will extract anything that has an anchor that looks like uh, what we just created, like this. Um, and then we need to do something about it now because now we're capturing it in the attribute value, but we need to store it in the Excel file that we have. Uh, but before we do that, we need to get, we need to use the action get first free row slash column from Excel. And it'll be our Excel 2 instance. That's fine. Um, and now we can write to Excel. So we will have to write two things. The first thing, we will have to reference the Excel thing, thing, uh, instance. The first thing we want to write is the current item, which will be the long, long URL, but that's just for us to get the uh, get some details in. We will write it on the specified cell, which will be uh, column one, and then it will be uh, the first three row. First three, not three, first three row, like so. Um, and we will just copy that and say on column two, we want to write the attribute uh, value that we just found on column two on the first three row. This should basically be it. Now we just need to close uh, the Excel file outside of the loop or the for each uh, instance. We want to save it. Uh, we want to reference the Excel two. We want to save it uh, somewhere. So we choose somewhere here, uh, LinkedIn, uh, mails uh, video so this is the mails we're getting from the video uh, that I'm doing now and then we also just need to close the uh, web browser there's no way no reason for us to have that open anymore now that is 18 the only thing that we're missing now is to adjust uh, this specific action because now we're basically going in um, into uh, let's just take an example so if we don't pick her if we pick the first one 
like so. We will go into his page. We will uh, change the URL so we will get the contacts info like this. But then we will run into a problem on some, if not a lot of them, unfortunately, because they don't have an email address listed on their page. So we need to adjust um, this action, get details of elements on web page, because if there is an error, we don't want the flow to just stop um, and do nothing. Uh, we need to do something about it. So we will just con we will add that the uh, flow should continue to run if we don't find a mail, so it shouldn't block it, and it should just go to the next action. And then we will just add a new rule to say that the variable, um, and we will call the attribute value, attribute value, and we will call this uh, variable also attribute value, and we will set it to null. So this is basically what this is doing. If we just expand it a bit, is and save it. Then what we're doing now is that we will go into the uh, into the link. We will find anything that looks like a mail. So the href equals mail to something something something. We will take that and we will store it in attribute value. Uh, but if we can't find anything, we will also we will add when we run that for each um, uh, run we will add a null to that variable because then we will then basically either paste in null or the actual uh, email address that we find into the Excel sheet. So this is it. Now we will just have to close everything down and we will have a go at it um, and we will have a go. So let's see. And there we have it. So now what we need to do is that we open up the output file to see the result. And as you can see, we've been a little bit unfortunate because there's only been one email on the 20, um, 20 people that we've been uh, running through. 